Hi everybody, this is Sarah Chiu. The program is called Basket Starfish, our language core. I keep forgetting to tell you that uh, actually I have uploaded the program on YouTube. So if I type in, you know, the name of the program, you can actually find all the last uh, past episodes. So if you wonder what a and K, all these sounds and forms were, uh, I mean, stood for. So you can also look back into it, okay? This week I'm going to uh, continue uh, with the female, uh, the hidden female uh, um, at the back of our languages. So uh, again, you know, the major sound that will be involved will be H again, you know, the form of H again. Uh, but uh, before that, you know, I want to show you a book which is a very good read. Um, it's called The Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt, you know, written by Chris Hedges and Joe Sackle. This is the book right here. It's a very good read. Why I bring it out tonight is that um, the topic I'm going to talk about is the hidden female. Uh, you will see a lot of the worship of the, the female thread, which is the matrilineal uh, line, and uh, which is still uh, carried on by the Jewish people, and also um, the worship of the worm itself. You know, um, the worm itself is actually uh, an empty space. So you will see that as, as time goes by, um, other than the vessel itself, uh, it's actually kind of emptiness that people are worshipping. It seems that the ancients are very imaginative and they have a very, very deep understanding of different concepts rather than us, you know, these days, you know, as scientific as we think we are, we actually hold on to more materialistic things, you know. I think the, um, as you will see in the slides, you know, the worshipping of an empty space is, uh, is very strong the evidences so but I want to read you a little paragraph right here so you will understand the background of um, why I am saying that you know uh, one of the passage states that the, uh, the dichotomy of belief between white men and Native American was so vast that those who held on to animalism and mysticism, to ambiguity and mystery, to the centrality of the human imagination, to communal living and a uh, concept of the sacred had to be extinguished. So uh, after years of our modern education system, uh, it seems that uh, we no longer understand the imagination of the ancient. But to understand the call of our human language, we do have to go back into the imagination of the ancient. So uh, take away uh, your, little, your, your kind of scientific mind a little bit away uh, and try to understand what I'm going to present to you tonight, okay? Um, I'm not going to, to go to the normal uh, slides. I will go directly to my slides tonight because because I hope to finish as much as I can uh, the, all those um, uh, uh, ideas that I want to get across, okay? And here it is. Whoop, why is it? Okay, sorry. This slide show. Okay. Again, uh, I'm going to talk about the cover of thousands of years used to hide and transfer the female power into a patriarchal society. The thing is that um, uh, you will see a lot of remnants of the worship of two things. First of the female thread, the umbilical cord. And the second one is the receptacle, the, uh, which can be a, a water, a spring, or a well, or actually it ended up, you know, to understand it as a kind of emptiness. So uh, tonight you have to understand a little bit between reality and object and which become concepts and then they shift between each other and the writing and the sound so all this has to be involved okay so um, again you know I bring you back to the ancient world where where fertility was worshipped because you need people to work you know if you you collect food for uh, I mean if you're a hunter gatherer you need more people to go around to vast area to hunt and to gather right so fertility was very important 
So as I already talked many times, you know, the form of H right there, you know, it's the link, you know, to your mother's umbilical cord. And um, this is hung the thread. And then the other word is the how, you know, the empty womb that uh, the mother gave birth. You know, first of all, uh, it is this uh, umbilical cord, the ancient sea again and again. Of course, these days, you know, when births only happened in hospital, you no longer see them. But in, imagine, put yourself back into the ancient world when birth and death is almost a daily ritual. It's because you see a lot of animal giving birth and then uh, women are, are having tons of babies. So you will see that as from a very early age and you will see it again and again. So it is very easy, you know, to link these two concepts together. The other is the uh, earliest, you know, human technology, the, the trailing of the, th the rope and the thread itself. Without the rope and the thread, you know, we cannot start our civilization. So I have already shown you, this is ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, this is Chinese, this is in, um, Greek itself. All these represent he sound and a heavy uh, sound uh, as high in Chinese, okay? It all represent the rope uh, or the making of a rope. And the other very important thing is that they keep also seeing it again and again is the worm that comes came out with the baby with the umbilical cord attached to and which actually form you know naturally uh, like an elongation of this thread become this little bag that the baby any kind of baby that lived in not only human including animals okay and and um, the, this is uh, even in modern biology if you look it up you know they have a word called uh, Korean you know but of course if you look back to the ancient Greek it is actually the H sound and this is the confusion in the modern English transcription so again you know it is it is important to know through which lens you are understanding the world you know so you are only understanding the world through the Western and the English point of view I mean English speakers point of view so the Greek actually at the in ancient times still pronounce it with an X sound okay and so these threads are very linked together and then I show you you know the ancient Egyptian hieroglyph I have this is hum either it's a, a hole that contains water or the worm and the vulva itself which basically for them you know express the similar meaning and this is a Chinese word hum hum has a lot also to do with pregnancy as you can see you know the the triangle right there is uh, like injecting liquid into that bowl right there and you can actually understand it very easily and then um, um, of course you know the ancient also to transfer the concept of this empty uh, vessel in like uh, in real life and this is actually uh, we in Chinese also have a uh, hum uh, note you know I use the uh, Cantonese as the base so uh, Cantonese hold a lot of ancient sound uh, we pronounce this as hum and we pronounce this as hum uh, when Whenever there is a hum, that is actually a, a whole, um, a bulging shape that holds water, okay? And of course, there's also part of life in ancient time. And the other thing uh, connected to the hem itself is the uh, very uh, ritual uh, uh, shore of the Jewish people as I said you know uh, a lot of ancient people pay a lot of, of attention to, to make a lot of hem uh, because for them it is a symbol of continuation and here is a picture of uh, the um, one of the very famous queen in Egypt and this is Hatshepsut and and as you can see you know even though he's, he's, uh, she's female even though she inherited the line and still when the ritual comes you know when the patriarchal society raised you know she was still forced to wear you know this regalia you know as the beard of the pharaoh and of course you know the beard is just a continuation of hair that's why all the braids and the tassels became so important as a symbol in all ancient clothes so they are all the continuation of this H thread okay and so um, you will uh, the concept between the thread and the water and the blood flow it's happened very very easily as three lines you know where and it, they turn into writing. So this thread again, the Jewish thread, and this is the Chinese uh, thread, you know, the tassel actually also shows the aristocratic line, shows who, which family you belong to. So all this, you know, has been followed. And also this happens, you know, in all Europe, you know,
know the braid and the tassel is, has always been very important and if you look east also you will see that the Hindus also pay a lot of attention to this thread and then of course you know you won't miss this sash the thread itself you know where basically they are the same concept right there they are the continuation of those divine thread that they claim that they link to you know all the royal families in Europe still do this of course you know the men also uh, took away a lot of the power now uh, because the Queen of England actually inherited by birthright so she's she has the right to wear this big fat uh, sash. But if you look at the uh, other European family, the royal family always have the male wearing the very big fat, uh, you know, sash, and then the female only reduced to wearing the very thin one. Okay? So again, you know, when the uh, uh, government standing together, you will see that, you know, this uh, English family will still, you know, distinguish themselves by showing you that they are linked to the divine threat itself. And, and of course, in the democratic world, you know, you shouldn't be counting on those lineage. And again, you know, after the using the threat as an, a concept, uh, the other thing will be the water flow, okay? And as I showed you before, this is a very important artifact you find in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York and this is a libation dish you know the the part exactly is the worm of a female and then the Chinese will have something like this and then uh, a lot of these you know also uh, links to a lot of the H word from the very earliest Sumerian you will see the vulva with this line coming out flowing out it actually has an H sound right there it means the abdomen and the lower part of the body which is um, of course you know the worm itself for the female and then um, the hum for the hieroglyph and then um, they have also hieroglyph like that showing either human being or the uh, pregnancy and birth you will see that three line you know consistent you know happening either you can understand as the threat or you can understand as the water flow of course in a male dominated society the Egyptologists will tell you that it is the sun with the rays coming down but I as a female I will understand it as a well with a spring with the water flowing down okay so it has actually a pun right there don't ever think that the picture can only explain in one way it can actually understood in very different ways and this is Chinese again you know this is hum right there this is how we show the uh, uh, the mouth uh, it has the sound of how right there so all the first line actually definitely hold the H sound right there it has a lot to do with the exit and where you give uh, female give birth and this is how we show the, the birth you know and you will see that it is exactly uh, the same uh, from the hieroglyph to the Chinese and then on this end you know if you look at them uh, not meaning birth itself uh, meaning the vessel you will understand it similar way these two in ancient uh, Sumerian also has this H sound right there this is a port and, 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 and vessel this is a port and they sound as hub right there and string um, and hieroglyph again this is hub this is a, a water vessel right there and and this is uh, how they express the, the breast itself and um, this is Chinese you see all the similar forms the Chinese actually as time went by we, we have this square form exactly like this and we have a word like this exactly sound the same this is hub in Sumerian this is hub in Chinese hub can also mean, you know, when you uh, bind things together and it also mean a vessel, uh, something like this, I will show you in the next slide. But uh, I've, uh, it gradually turned into a ritual vessel. This is a, a very important ritual vessel that we use to uh, worship ancestors. Okay, so they are all related to the holder of water and liquid. And um, again, the life-giving water. When I lived in the um, desert, you know, when you travel for miles and miles, whenever you see little uh, thing like this, you will see that there is water source. And it is very important because, you know, now you're used to having a tap right next to you you can have water anytime but if you travel in the desert really water is very very important it is as important as life so you will see that all this with the sound of hum or, or and 
they will all look similar, you know, they all uh, play between a little hole and also the vulva itself. And of course, you, you can also write it that way as a sprain, okay? And that will also begin to change the pronunciation as the I or the Ein in, in Arabic, the I in, Chi in, in, in um, English and the An in Chinese, okay, in Cantonese, okay? So this is thread, between thread and the spring. This is one of the very important picture in Dura Europos, in the Jewish mu mural. And um, if you think that the Jewish doesn't use pictures, you know, you might uh, look uh, again, because this very, very early synagogue, you know, actually shows a lot of the uh, pictures, you know, because people do not, uh, did not write, or so they use pictures to educate themselves. So exactly like the icon of an Orthodox church, the Jews were also used to do that so you can understand this you know they said that this is the story of Moses striking the rock and then the spring and water comes out and then it fits to every single tribe of the the Jewish tribes I mean okay so I will show you one Cantonese sound you know this is the word hing or fong and you will see that this uh, spring itself actually water comes out to split into into different into two different branches for us it means brotherhood of course you come from the same womb and that will exactly uh, how people can understand this too this is from the same uh, source you know that fit into different uh, tribes of the Jewish tribe and then the Hebrew Ach or Ahi will be my brother okay so you will see that the her is uh, very very important the Ahra or Hira, um, depend on how you pronounce it, will be the following, the next and the others. And I will show you a Chinese writing, the whatever, the, the A shape, you know, the, the uh, unseen energy dangling after the rope will be what we call how. Can you see the, hey, can you hear the H sound? That's exactly what's following and also the next and what's after as well in Chinese. Okay, so again, this is the descendant in Chinese, whoever is holding the thread. And then, of course, in English, you have air, you have heritage, and then, of course, you have uh, behind the word high, H I N D, hind. So, uh, whatever is behind behind too. Okay, so uh, there is a lost word in lost uh, symbol in the ancient Hebrew, um, and it's a very ambiguous sound called ayin, ayin. Okay, so it is somewhere between the ayin, um, the later word, and this. But you can see that it is. It looks like the thread itself. And then if you follow the sound, you will actually go to the Gaelic ray, uh, ray, right there. It's a small stream. And look at all this. You will understand better by picture. It's very difficult difficult to, to explain it in words. It's actually easier to understand in picture. This actually become uh, the glen in English, a small uh, stream, and in uh, Arabic it still is grain. Grain, so it still means, you know, the stream, you know. Normally a family will hold on uh, a stream, and the stream will feed the whole family, the tribe, you know, the, so it's always belong to a tribe, both thing. And then uh, with the time went by, you know the word ein becomes simplified as ein or ein and is as you see you know the at the beginning it's still a little hole like this and then it become the pubic tri uh, triangle right there and it become the writing right there the ein the ein actually become a flow uh, something that flows out an eye or fountain okay so if you look at all this, whether it's expressed as a womb, a hole, or the pubic triangle, you can still understood it as a female organ, okay? So uh, again, I, I compare all this sound. Fons in Latin means a fountain. Enfant in French is an infant. So you will see this fong, 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 okay? Uh, but I will show you uh, something um, very uh, visually and as well as sound. And as I said, the tassel are very, very important um, because, you know, from ancient time, they actually play a metaphor, you know, the thread is like uh, the bean itself. When you trail these things together, the Sumerian, this her uh, actually means, you know, existence. And in Cantonese, when we say hai, hai to, actually means the existence as well, exactly the same as when you say Hebrew, the hai, you know, uh, the existence, your life, you know, so in haya in Arabic. So this ha uh, in an airy sound, it actually means existence. 
existence. And then and the has also means abdomen again, the, your belly. And then a uh, hieroglyph, you will see that uh, the word and the concept and the reality actually merge together. This is human being. This is something to do with birth. And this is, of course, birth very obviously. And then the Chinese have this as hing, as you can see the sounds you follow. Or, or we sometimes we write this uh, round shape as a tri pubic triangle right there. And then we also have the pronunciation as the fong. And as you can see, if I say fong, you can understand it as fonts, you know, the, the, the fountain, you know, and and as Christianity proceeds, this is the fountain of life when people uh, put it in the baptismal font, okay? So, um, again, this is Chinese writing, fong again, uh, but we use it in a negative way now because it becomes, you know, a birth when you lose a baby. But after all, this is a baby coming out with the water, okay? So, um, as... Um, because of the vessel, we use a lot of imagery of vessel. Other than just the vessel, we put a drop of blood right there. We pronounce it as hood and Cantonese. And this is the blood, uh, the word blood or, or the bloodline or bloodline relationship. Okay. So as you can see, this vessel with a leg, and you can see that this is a Chinese tradition instead of the uh, Egyptian vessel you already saw. Uh, but I will see you one very interesting word too in Chinese. We say as you can see this is a baby on top of the vessel this is actually means the air and and the, the first son the eldest son and also means great and also eminent and this because this is the heir himself okay so um, this is the first uh, one of the very famous scholar of the Taoist Taoism and in and his name is in the uh, I mean he lived in the fourth century BC and his name actually means the Mangji actually is the first baby and and his as I said very famous in Taoism but if you look at this again this is Mang if you don't look at that you look at great and eminent look at the icon in the Orthodox Church you know the the baby who's always in this cup is always Jesus Christ and of course you know you look in Latin the the, the Magna and it means great and the big you think the Chinese the Cantonese are speaking Latin or the Latin are speaking Cantonese or it is actually came from the same core you tell me okay because uh, it depends on through which pair of eye we are looking at the world okay again the fountain of life I show you tons of these pictures and also artifacts and the Chinese since the very beginning you know the Neolithic uh, time 10,000 years ago we used a lot of the breast you know to you to make into a vessel this is the upper part of the female body this is the lower part of the female body the worm and then they always become a libation dish and this is always to serve you know liquid food like porridge and milky stuff and then um, the, in Iran they started to have this you know uh, libation dish look at it you know does it doesn't it look like a breast to you and then as time went by of course it become the Greek uh, vessel and the Greek understood it you know as actually as the omphalos omphalo means you you know the uh, the umbilical cord you know the your 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 belly button right there so they actually merged the two together the upper body you can see you know it's very clear it's also the nipple but they also refer it as the omphalos you know the the umbilical cord the right there the belly button so they actually merged the two together as a libation because both have water flowing out so this is what they want fertility okay so um, the Chinese have this all this writing you know all ritual vessels and then as I said this is the sound hood and I will show you the sound it means blood in Chinese um, in Cantonese reading and then this is Turkish hoi also means blood and then this is in Persian hun blood okay and the other one is Armenian uh, wait, okay, so it's blood. So all these different language family according to the linguist. So are we all different family or are we all one family sharing one core? So we are all just branches of the same core, please, okay? So uh, this is exactly what I've been trying to tell again and again. Okay, I want to show you uh, the vessel that I talked about in the last uh, slide. And this is how 
uh, in Sumerian and this is hub in Chinese and it's for us it means a box or a case that uh, has two parts that fit together. Look at how it looks like in ancient time. Then uh, actually, you know, two parts put together. So if you put the top part, you know, like the female body, um, the, 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 uh, the breast, and also the lower part of the body actually become one whole unit. And it is hub in Cantonese and also hub in Sumerian. So the sound has never lost. Again, as I said, you know, it is grammar that separates us into different people. It is not uh, we, if we change the core, we are still the same people. So uh, again, I want to show you the holder of the thread of the cup. Again, in the um, Greek world, Hera was a very important mother goddess. As the uh, you, they cannot avoid putting the thread right there to show his she's the official holder of the thread. And you look at what she's holding. She's holding the cup and the libation dish. The Egyptian uh, at that time will hold this. The the Greek will gradually hold that they, they refer it as the as the belly button okay so um, her daughter still he be still holding the thread that's why the the, the male dominate society Heracle has to marry Hebe to in order to get the legitimate thread okay so uh, you will see that the male gradually took over because they cannot cheat the people at that time they still has to link to the female thread somehow so um, um, it's also about the hollow the hollowness the, the flow has to come from this hollow dish okay and about the link is also the hymen I show you all these words you know either relating to the sound as H either writing as the H so everything grouped together you will see the full picture okay this is hum this is in ancient um, Sumerian this is Chinese and then uh, all this original writing itself so um, the hidden queen you know so again this is Hera right there and interestingly Chinese has a word writing right this we say Guan Guan this is the uh, ruler and this is Guan right there because later on you see the holder of the staff the holder of the bow this is actually referred to a female um, sorry, I will refer this. I will continue next time because time is running out. You know, I really want to show you this.